Last week on the channel, I shared an open source video generation solution called Cog X Video, and I showed you how you can run that on your very own PC in Comfy UI, either by running it locally on your own machine or how you can use a remote service like our sponsor Mimic PC to run that workflow on a system that can support it. Light Tricks are the folks who brought you the LTX Studio storyboarding software. And now they've created what they're calling the first real-time AI video generation open source model. This means, of course, that it is free to use. You can run it on your own machine. And there are a few breakthroughs here with LTXV. Number one, you don't have to have a super powerful computer. Even modestly charged computers can run this workflow without too much of a problem. And today we'll be talking about how you can run that software on Mimic PC and not have to worry about a GPU at all. The other thing to note is that it is fast. The CogX video workflow we shared was rendering five to six second video in about three minutes or so, the LTX video will render these six second videos at a resolution of 768 by 512 in 30 seconds on my NVIDIA RTX 3090. And the videos you're seeing right now are all examples of the output. It is hit and miss, and you should not, at least at this time, expect anywhere near the quality that you're getting from folks like Minimax and Kling and the other higher end AI video generation services where the models require way more GPU power than the average person has. But given those restrictions, the output of LTX is incredible and there are some tips and tricks to make the output even better and I'm going to share those with you today. Here are just a few examples that they have on the website here. You can see that the colors are great, the consistency is great. I'll leave a link to this page so you can check this out yourself but when you follow through to the documentation and you end up at the GitHub page which is where you can access the code and install this locally if you are so inclined to do something like that. There is also a hugging face interface where you can play with this tech however sometimes you have long queue times and it's not as fast to render in my experience. This video is really aimed at those who you'd like to be able to run this yourself, we're going to be covering how to run both the text to video and the image to video workflows in Comfy UI. And I'm going to show you how to use Mimic PC to access this workflow quickly and not have to worry about installing anything. If you're new to this channel and you don't know about Mimic PC, they are a regular sponsor on our channel because they allow people who either don't have a GPU or need more GPU processing power than they currently have to be able to run these high-end AI applications on remote systems with extremely powerful GPUs and lots of RAM for literally pennies. And with their new bargain plans, you can save even more. And I'll show you that as we go along. Setting up an account at Mimic PC is free, but they are currently offering a Black Friday 60% off sale on their storage and other services, so you might want to just check that out. Once you have an account set up at Mimic PC, running this workflow is as easy as clicking the link in the description below. But another way to find this and other helpful workflows is Mimic PC's Discover section. So let's get logged in and I'll pop over to Discover. And currently right here on the front page is this workflow, LTX video, text to video, and image to video in one, which makes this super convenient. So to get going with this, you simply click on operate. Here's where you choose the GPU you want. Now, as I said, LTX video is not that demanding. So to test that theory, I'm going to use their medium package which includes a T4 GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM for the CPU. And here's where we get into the pricing options. Instant pricing means that you instantly get access to this machine and it will be uninterrupted for the entire time that you're using it. The bargain option gives you a 50% discount on the instant option. However, it's possible that your process could get interrupted if user demand goes up. So if you're running processes that take a long time, you probably want to go with the instant package so there's no danger of being interrupted. However, in the case of LTX video, where each of these videos is rendered in about 30 seconds, you're saving a ton of money by going for 25 cents an hour. So let's choose that 25 cents an hour bargain option for this. The automatic extension option is again great for longer sessions. You may not need that in this session because you'll be sitting here at the computer. These generations are going to take 30 seconds. You'll be active. You probably don't need an automatic extension. If you need more time, you can do it manually at that time. I won't check that for this moment and I'll click on create and start. Because I've chosen the bargain option, you get this warning that says, hey, you know, this could get interrupted. I hope you understand all that. And you say, yes, I do understand that. Proceed. It can also take a little longer for the bargain machines to start anywhere from one and a half to six minutes as opposed to one to two minutes on the instant plan. And I'll clarify again, you're not charged for any of this setup time. When it loads up, here's what you got. First thing I'm going to do is close this window here just to give myself more space. This is divided up into two groups. One is the image to video group and one is the text to video group. It's extremely simple to use and everything is already set up for you. All you need to do is give it the prompt or in the case of image to video an image and a prompt. Right off the bat, I'm going to show you one quick trick to make this a little easier to work with. If I double click in the blank area here and search for group, 
I want to choose the fast group bypasser. This will create a little node that gives me basically an off and on switch to each of the groups and the contents in it. So if I just want to run the image to video process, I would turn off the text to video process and vice versa. If I just want to run the text to video process, then I would turn that one off. It's just easier than selecting all of the nodes and bypassing them. Now, one thing to notice about these prompts is they are very detailed. And if you don't give it a good detailed prompt, you're going to get a crappy result. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. For now, I'm going to turn off image to video and just work with the text to video. Let's delete what's in here and let's put in a very simple one line prompt, a man eating waffles. And we'll go ahead and cue that. Now this is the first time we're running this process, so it will take a little longer for this model to load, but that's a one time thing. And once it loads once, then every time you click on cue, you are 30 seconds away from a result. Hmm. As you'll recall, I used a 16 gigabyte GPU and I'm getting much slower results than I do with the higher ones. So this was an experiment on my part to try the medium, but instead of 30 seconds where each step of the 30 steps that this process takes, taking just one second, it's taking several seconds. So I'm actually going to cancel this whole thing because ultimately I'm going to save way more money in processing time if I use a faster GPU to get these things done in 30 seconds than trying to save money on the GPU up front and waiting longer for the process to render. So I'm going to stop the machine up here. I'm going to go back to my own portal here on Mimic PC, which gives me access to all the machines I've created. This machine here is running the same workflow on the large pro GPU, also on the bargain plan, but the faster GPU allows me much faster render times. Let's open this one up and I'll show you the difference. Here's the exact same workflow. You've got evidence of some of my previous attempts here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off image to video, turn on text to video. We'll clear out what I've got in here. And again, we'll say man, eating, I better not say man eating waffles. A man is eating waffles. They have a default negative prompt here. I will just go ahead and leave that there. Their default resolution is 768 by 512. We'll just go with that for the most part on this demo. Although you can experiment with higher resolutions and other frame rates, which I'll show you in a moment. We'll click on Q prompt. And again, we wait for the initial video model to load. And again, as you can see, there are 30 steps in this process and we are moving along at about one step per second. So 30 steps, 30 seconds. This default workflow gives you two different output windows. One creates an animated WebP or an animated GIF file and the other creates an actual video file. I normally don't use these animated GIF files or whatever. And especially in the image to video process, it seems to slow things down. And since I don't use it, I'll disable it. This is a man eating waffles. And although we've got some video, it's very unclear what's going on. You would never guess this is a man eating waffles. So how can we create these complex prompts that it's going to understand? If we go back to their hugging face demo, there's a link here for tips for best results. And in this paragraph here, it tells you exactly what you should do focus on detailed chronological descriptions and so on. They give a list and to go through that list every time would be a little bit cumbersome to make the best prompt. So I provided a hack in the description in the form of a prompt for chat GPT, which will create a prompt generator based on a very simple input. So I set it up with my own statement. I want you to create a prompt suitable for generating an AI video. I will tell you in one sentence what I want to happen in the video, and then you will elaborate on that to create a prompt that will get the best results. Then I just pasted in exactly exactly what they told us it wants. And then at the end, I say, acknowledge that you understand your instruction. So if you paste this prompt into chat GPT and you submit it, it will say understood. Please provide the single sentence describing the desired action. So in this case, I'm going to say a man is eating waffles and submit that. Now it begins to give us a highly detailed prompt. He sits at a small rustic table. It describes the kitchen. He lifts a piece to his mouth, chewing thoughtfully. Anyway, much more detail there. So I'm just going to copy that, go back over to our machine here and replace this prompt with that one and click on Q. And you'll see that immediately we jump right over here to the sampler and it starts clicking away at one step per second, which means that in 30 seconds, we're going to have this 512 video. Okay. So now we've got a much better result. This is clearly waffle ish in nature. We have a man, he's getting ready to eat them. Now, of course we've got some bendy spoons, but remember there is no spoon, but we've got nice smooth camera movement, consistency in the background, much more detail. You can see that we're headed in the right direction. As I said, this node right here can sometimes slow down the process a bit, especially in my experience in the image to video stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is just bypass it by selecting it and clicking control B. Then I'm going to close it up with this little dot here and I'm going to drag it out of this group. And the reason I drag it out of the group is because then it will be unaffected by the switch. So it will just stay off. 
And I'm going to do the same thing up here because this is really where it's a problem. It's already bypassed right now, so I'm just going to drag it out of the group. Let's just do one more example, then we'll go to image to video. A cat and mouse are watching TV. So again, this is the simple prompt, so I don't expect very good results here. We'll click on Q, starts up immediately, and okay, that is a mess, and it made a cartoon, and let's just try our trick and see what happens. So we're just going to take that prompt, take it over into chat. I'm just going to paste it right into our little conversation, not to give it any other instruction. It already knows what to do. Here is the extended prompt, which I will copy, paste back in over here, and run this. Okay, that's kind of dark and weird. We've got a mouse here. We've got a cat-like creature, which is a little horrific. This is a very interesting vibe and definitely demonstrates some of the limitations here of the model because even with the detailed prompt, we're getting something like this. This is where image to video is really going to shine. So how do we compare this apples to apples here? We need an image, right? So here's a little fun hack you can do and you can use any image generator you like. In this case, I'm going to use the one over at Open Art because it's just really quick. I can go over here to create this image and I'm going to paste in that expanded link about the cat and mouse watching TV. I'm going to set my width and height to the exact ratio that this particular process once, which is 768 by 512. I'll give myself a few images to choose from. I'm going to choose the flux model because it's super fast and click on create. Now we've got a few options of a cat and mouse watching TV. I think this one I like, and I'm just going to copy that, come over here, turn off our text to video, turn on our image to video, and choose files to upload. I will choose our cat and mouse picture. Then I'll replace this prompt with the same prompt that generated the image and generate that. Because the model's already loaded from the other process, we don't have to wait for that to happen. It just goes right into the sampler. And here's our initial result. Not much happening here, but I did just get the notification there that my bargain machine is going to come to an end. So I'm going to go ahead and end this machine and go back to my instant so I don't have to worry about being interrupted. But that's a great example of how this works. It gave us the warning that it's going to stop and it's going to stop and I don't have the opportunity to extend it. So bye bye kitty and mouse. I'll see you on the other machine. As mentioned, because I'm on the instant plan, I only wait 30 seconds to two minutes for the machine instead of the up to five or six minutes that the bargain plan has. We're here on the new machine and you'll notice that it maintained the work that I did on the other machine. So even though the GPU changed, I didn't lose any of my work. So as you can see, this is a pretty nice image here. There's not a lot of camera movement, but we've got a candle flickering in the background. Nothing's happening on the TV. And while I wouldn't say this is the most natural animation in the world, it is still pretty nice. Certainly much better than this. Let's do another example, except this time we'll keep both of these on and you'll see that you get two versions in one pass. So first let's just create a simple prompt. A pink and white BW beetle is riding along the Pacific coast. We'll submit that. We'll get a much better prompt. We'll copy that. We'll go over to Mimic. We'll replace the prompts in both groups. So the image to video group, and I'll return on the text to video group and replace that prompt with the new one. And I'll go back over to open art and create an image based on that. So paste that prompt in, click create. And let's see, I got a few options here, all pretty similar. We'll go with this one. I'm just going to copy it, go over here to Mimic and paste it in, and we're ready to go. Because this group is on top, it will be processed first, so we'll get the image to video result first. There's the image to video result, and that is solid. Uh, solid. We got the waves going in the background, the car is consistent, it's nice. Here's the text to video. While not as precise and high res, we did get what we were looking for. I mean, we've got the pink and white BW. It's going along the coast. It's just a little bit fuzzy because it's the text to image and not based off of a real image, but that's pretty impressive. One more just for fun. Woman opens closet door to reveal frightening scaly monster with tentacles. Okay, we've got our big prompt. We'll paste it in the positive prompt section of each group. We'll go create an image. I think that one's probably the winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grab this one, paste it in here, and cue it up. As I said, these results can be hit and miss. While the VW was awesome, this one's a little questionable for sure. The nice thing is, is we can run this over and over again with different seeds to get different results. But at first, we get no movement whatsoever and then we sort of have this door and it fades to black and we don't really see what's going on. The text to video version is just a little too dark to see what's going on. It appears like there's a door that opens and there's a monster inside. I'd just like to be able to see it a little bit better. The seed is randomized every time you run the process, so I can just run it again and we'll get totally different results. And of course, you could go in and tweak the prompt at this point, maybe add more lights or other details that you want to make sure get in here that weren't generated by the chat prompt. But so here's a slightly different version. Again, it kind of starts slow and the monster starts to come out and then she pushes it back in and we get this revolving door thing. So again, that's a little odd. And down here again, we see a door. 
we see it open-ish, and there's a monster in there. So run multiple times and see what happens. I mentioned being able to do different resolutions and different frame rates. Over here on the Hugging Face page, you can scroll down and see some of the resolution presets they give you. So we've got anything from 1216 by 704 generating 41 frames, all the way down to generating 257 frames. The trade-off is quality. It says here, with the resolution presets, higher resolutions for detailed scenes, lower for faster generations and simpler scenes. So why don't we just try the extremes on these with this last prompt and see what we get. So first, 1216 by 704. So that's going to be set here, 1216, 704, and do the same thing up here, 1216, 704. Let's go generate an image. We'll use this image. The number of frames was 41, so we need to adjust that. So we change this 97 to 41, up at the top in the top group, and same thing here, 41, and let's see how that affects things. Render time is even faster, so here's the video version, so it is shorter and higher resolution, but there's not as much movement going on, like it said, simple movements for the higher resolutions. So I did ask it to do a lot, opening a door and all that stuff, so probably not the best example, and then down here, now we see the woman, now we're sort of like from inside the closet, we see the woman coming in, but no real monster here. And on the other end of the scale, it was 512 by 320, and 257 frames. So let's make those changes. 512, 320, 257. 512, 320, 257. We are moving along quickly. So this actually generated a 10 second video, which is a little bit dark for us to see. Maybe we should do it with a prompt where it's not so dark. But we see the woman, we see the creature, but it kind of makes its own thing up after a few seconds. Down here in text to video, we've got a little bit of nothing happening at first, and then the door opens and we see some tentacles, I think, and it's just very unclear what's going on there. Just because I'm curious and to be fair to the process, I'm going to try this exact setting, but with a brighter video idea. So let's do something like duck swimming in a pond. We'll copy that, replace these prompts, go create an image, and cue it. This is actually getting much faster than one frame per second. Okay, so now we've got just sort of a gentle rippling. He's not really moving anywhere. Here it is in its native resolution. At 10 seconds, though, we got a 10-second clip that looks like this, and that's pretty nice. To take 30 seconds to generate a 10-second clip, you might be able to actually use videos of this size for something small, maybe B-roll for a project. I don't know. Right now, I think this is all about playing with it and experimenting with it and going, oh, I'm sure glad I've got my toe in this water right now. And in the text to video option, we have 10 seconds of no duck. Let's just run it again, just for fun, see if we get a duck this time. A very similar result here with the image to video, but he doesn't turn his head in an unnatural way this time. So this is actually the better of the two, I think. And now it looks like we have a Loch Ness Monster sighting. So I'm not sure what's going on with the duck drawing here in the text to video, but you've seen that results can be hit and miss whether you go image to video or text to video, but it's still so cool that you can do something like this in such a short amount of time and it's free and open source. If these are the types of things you'd like to learn more about, well, why not subscribe to this channel? Because this is the type of stuff we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you, and I will...